In this video, we're going to solve a Coulomb's law problem involving two charges. So the basic setup of the problem is that we have some charge, Q1, of 5 microcoulombs, and we know the force that that charge is experiencing due to a second charge, Q2. And that force is given by 3 newtons i hat minus 10 newtons j hat, and we write that as F21, which is the force due to particle 2 on particle 1. And the question that we're trying to answer is, where should we put particle Q2 in order to achieve this force? So before we begin with any kind of mathematical analysis, first let's just think, where in general should this charge be? Well, if we draw our force 2, 1 on Q1, we know that these two charges have the same sign and therefore will repel one another. So if I want Q1 to experience a force down and to the right like this, then Q2 should lie somewhere up and to the left. Somewhere in this region here is where we need Q2 to be so that it can ex exert a repulsive force down and to the right. So that's our basic guess is Q2 needs to be somewhere up here. And what we're going to do now is use math to figure out exactly where that should be. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to simply find the magnitude of our force. The goal behind this is we're going to use the force magnitude to find the distance between the two particles. So to begin with, we're going to completely ignore any directionality in our math, and we're going to only work with magnitudes. The reason that we do this is because it is difficult to keep track of vectors while we are trying to solve for magnitudes, but it's quite easy to find how far apart these two particles should be. So if we find our F21 magnitude simply by doing Pythagorean theorem on our force, we get that it should be the square root of 109 newtons. Now what we can do is that we can use this force magnitude in order to find out our distance between the two particles. Simply by solving Coulomb's law, notice that we have no directional r hat over here, or no i hats and j hats over here. We have no i hats and j hats over here. The idea is that Coulomb's law is a vector equation, but the magnitudes of the two sides must also be equal. That is, the magnitude of the force must equal the magnitude of this expression here, um, which gives us this distance when we solve for r12, because there's only one unknown. As a quick note here, we've been a little bit lazy with our uh, notation. So if q1 and q2 weren't both positive, we would really need this to be a magnitude as well. Because hypothetically, Q1 could be negative, and therefore this whole term would be negative, and we can't have a negative thing equal to a positive thing. So we really need a magnitude of this entire term here. Um, in this case, it doesn't actually matter since both of our charges are positive. Okay, so now we know how far apart the two charges are. They are 0.21 meters apart. So now I know that Q2 needs to be 0.21 meters along this line up and to the left. Now that we know how far apart these two uh, charges must be, we can figure out the actual location of our final charge by looking at R21 vector. So what we know is that R21 vector, the vector that points from the location of charge 2 to the location of charge 1 is given by the magnitude of this vector, which we know, multiplied by r21 hat, the direction of this vector. But we have another piece of knowledge, and that is that r21 hat must point in the same direction as the force. How do I know? Well, if I look, if I just draw in a location for my charge q2 here, r21 vector points from q2 to q1. But that points down and to the right in exactly the same direction as f21. So if I can find the a unit vector that points in the direction of f21, I have a unit vector that points in the direction of 
R21. Therefore, I have R21 hat. So to find a unit, this unit vector, I simply take my force vector, divide it by the magnitude of my force vector, and I know that that must equal my distance vector, R21 hat, uh, R21 vector divided by R21 magnitude, because it is a unit vector that points in this direction. And there's only one possible unit vector that points down and to the left at exactly this angle. That is this unit vector here. Okay, so now we can construct R21 vector, the vector that points from charge two to charge one by multiplying the magnitude of that vector, which we already found using our magnitude of Coulomb's law, by the unit vector that we found using the force unit vector. Okay, so now what we can do is we can simply multiply these two together to find R21 vector. So now what we have is we have a vector in a known direction with a known length that points from charge two to charge one. And now we're only one step away from actually figuring out the location of that charge two. Now to solve mathematically for the position of charge two, we are going to look at this picture here. So what this picture shows is R2 is the vector that points from the origin to particle two. R1 is the vector that points from the origin to particle one, and R21 is the vector that points from charge two to charge one. If we look at this, this picture as a vector equation, what we can see is we can write it as R21 equals R1 minus R2. This is simply the definition of R21 that we have previously learned, but now we know R21 as a vector and we know R1 as a vector. R1 as a vector is simply three in the i hat direction plus one in the j hat direction because that is where I have initially located my particle. Three to the right and one up. So by knowing the location of charge one and the vector that points between them, I can actually solve this equation for R2. So R2 vector equals R1 vector minus R21, just solving this equation here. Then what we can do is we can just plug into our, uh, plug our known values for these two vectors in and solve. So Q2, or sorry, Q1 is at three meters in the I hat direction plus one meter in the J hat direction based on our picture here. And this is what we found for R21 vector. Plugging in numbers here, we find that it is 2.94 meters in the I hat direction and 1.20 meters in the J hat direction is the R2 vector, the vector that gives me the location of charge two. Now, if you compare R1, or sorry, my location of charge one here with the location of charge two, you see that charge two is to the left, right? It is a smaller I hat value and it is up. It has a larger J hat value, which means that it is up and to the left, just as we predicted. Where? Right there. To finish, let's just summarize exactly what we have done to solve this problem. We began by writing down all the information that we knew then what we did was we used only magnitudes to find the distance between these two particles. First, we found the magnitude of the force between the two particles from the magnitude of our force vector. And then we used that magnitude in order to find the magnitude of the distance between the two particles. Then we found the r hat vector and then the r1 R21 vector. So we found R21 hat using the direction of the force because we knew that R21 hat needed to point in the same direction as the force. Then we used the known magnitude and the known direction to find our R21 vector. And then we used this picture here where we have a relationship between R2, R1 and R21 in order to solve 
for the position of our particle, R2.